while the uh, title is still going on, <laughs> well, I'd like to ask you to sing 501. 501. Well, we will be singing, just be bold, come up. Even tonight, I still need some helpers. Anyone, come. Just four would be sufficient. Okay, 501.
thank you again for this gathering. Amen. Lord, you know the darkness of this age. Amen. You know how dark it is. Amen. Lord, you know how much light we need of you. Amen. Lord, grant us the light. Amen. Oh, the light from within. Amen. Lord, open our eyes Amen. and open up the situation. Amen. The situation of today's world. Amen the situation of today's Christianity Amen. and the situation of your recovery. Amen. Lord, we, cl we claim the cleansing of your precious blood. Amen. We thank you for such recovery Amen. and prevailing blood Amen. that covers all the time against the enemy's attacks. Amen. Lord, be with us throughout the meeting. Amen. Show us your way. Amen. We don't like to have the knowledge we like to see something. Amen. Grant us the view, Lord. Amen. Grant us the vision. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 I believe you all have seen the uh, title. Let's all read. God's ultimate proof. God's ultimate recovery. Three ultimate things, right? The ultimate situation of the world. As we have uh, seen already, the world situation has been and still is and will be under God's sovereignty. Amen. God created the universe, right? And God created this globe. And God created mankind. It's clear. So, whatever is the situation of mankind on this earth, it must be something under God's sovereign control. God, he had a purpose from the very beginning, right? In order to fulfill that purpose, he created the universe and mankind. We are told, you know, the heavens are for the earth, and the earth is for man. A man has a spirit Amen. to contact to receive, to experience, and to enjoy God. We all must have such a clear view to look at the world situation. All the newspapers, they don't have such a view. You see, all the world historians, history books, they all don't have such a view. They don't know. They just don't know from where the earth came, right? They just don't know why there is such a mankind on this earth. They saw all the situations, right? They studied. They even got doctor degree in history, right? And they studied all the things, yet they don't have a clear view. I didn't want to know what is this? Amen. What is for all about? Mm -hmm. Are we like them? No. No. They are in darkness. Right. You all know this. This doesn't mean I know much more than they do. I'm proud. I'm a great scholar. I'm not a scholar at all. I'm a China native. <laughs> Never forget this. And I mean it. I came from Nazareth of Galilee, despised by all Americans. I'm just a China native. But I must tell you, when the Lord Jesus was there, he had a view. He had a view over the entire situation. I am not boasting. As a follower of that Nazarene, I also have the view. Amen. No one can 
debate with me. The view. I have the, uh, the view. I know what is the situation of the world. And I know what is the situation of today's Christianity. And I know also what is the situation of the Lord's recovery. Amen. I know. And I've been with you over 10 years. You all know. At least to some extent, I know the Bible. Amen. I know God's word. I don't have any degree. I have no DD. <laughs> I don't even have any B, any M. <laughs> I have nothing. I'm just a Chinese native. But I know the Bible. Amen. I have the view. This is why after last Friday, my heart and my spirit still will let me go. You must give the saints an other message. <laughs> now, while I'm speaking, I'm not too sure this message will just be the end. <laughs> Only the Lord knows. Let us see. After the message being delivered, what will come out. But anyhow, dear saints, we are not in darkness. Amen. We are not. Uh, I am boasting for myself. I don't care how you feel. I am altogether not in darkness. Uh, not only I have spent over half century time in the Bible and the spiritual things and in church life, but I must tell you, since 1925, I can never forget the year. I read an issue of the most famous and top magazine published out in Shanghai in Chinese. And that magazine was an authority concerning the international affairs. It is there in every issue, over 100 pages, quite a big paper, monthly issue. It gives the Chinese people who are concerned for their country and the world situation, all the treaties, all the pacts, all the agreements signed between the powers and China. Since the first time I read that, that cheer up. I was just about 19. And that was the year I entered into my college. It stirred up my interest to uh, pay full attention to the world situation. And I did. I must tell you, from that year, today is 56 years. Six years more than half century. Every day. Every day. I paid attention to the world situation. I read newspapers. I collected the best wherever I go. Newspapers, you see. But I don't care for all those other pages. Just the international affairs. And tonight even, I uh, collect a few here, then I'll show you the importance. These are the papers that came out after last Friday night. There's one news that caused me to feel strongly I need to give you the seventh message from the newspaper. I'll point out to you. You see, now, I'm a China native, no doubt. I am. Yet, over 50 years, I spent my whole life, not for money, not for position, not for any career, even not for making a living. Some of you here from Chan do know, 50 years ago, I lived a very poor life serving the Lord. I was really poor. And after today, I don't know what I shall live on tomorrow. 
That was my situation half century ago. And the Lord knows this. You see? And I went, as I, I, I testified to you sometimes already. I was sent to Tianshan, close to old Peking capital, you know, where the big earthquake a few years ago just happened very close to that city. And I was sent by the work to <coughs> begin the Lord's recovery in that city, 1936. And I needed a bicycle. To you, this is nothing. American boy, girls, they use bags as toys. But I needed it for my work. And that only cost me $36, a small amount. No, oh, let me think about it. $32. <laughs> so, the $32, you know what? I prayed much for that bicycle. I prayed morning and evening. Lord, you know. I just moved here. I need a bicycle. That city in China, comparatively speaking, was quite big. That was the second big commercial city. The first one was Shanghai, and the second one was Tianjin. I need a bicycle. I prayed. 30, I didn't know. It cost me $32. It might have cost me more. I was not clear because I haven't about it yet. But I prayed in short. I prayed, okay, then a money order by the post office came from a far, far place to me for $20. And the Saturday, a local man, Christian man, contacted us, but not came to church life fully yet. He came to see me. And when he left, he said, Brother Lee, here's something for you. He left with me an envelope. And I opened up just $10. You see now, you can see $30. But by that time, I still wasn't care. Then the next day, the Lord's Day, in the meeting, an offering, an offering designated to me. Then the next day, the ones who took care of the offerings pass on these little designated writing to me, and I open up 30, not 30, just two dollars. <laughs> and I didn't think, think I got 32 dollars. But in, to make the story brief, then the next day, Monday, I went with a brother, and this brother still lives, you know, Zhang Zimo. Paul Han was with him, and he lost his job, and I had to take him in as my guest. You see, I was poor, yet I have to feed him. He came and stayed with me. Then <clears throat> we two went out to see something. I saw a bicycle store, and I got in, in to make the story. So, so brief. I got in. Well, I uh, was new. You know, I was there just about a little over one month. I didn't know the situation. I was afraid to be cheated. So I didn't take it right now. Then we went to a kind of a super, supermarket place. This market, the old type market. And when we came out of the market, I saw a bicycle outside the market, just the same as what I saw in the store. So I was watching. I said to that brother, I said, you see, this is the same thing. Right away, the owner came out. I said, that was a good chance for him to check the price. I said, sir, who you got this? He told me he got it from that store. I said, how much you pay? $32. I said, brother, let us go back to take that. And we've been back. It was $30. Uh, then he said, uh, do you need it urgently? I, I said, yes. He says, okay, you just pay me $2 more, 
I'll get the lessons for you. I will get everything for you. Then in the afternoon, you will use it. And in the afternoon, he brought me this to me, $32. You know what? After the bicycle came, in the evening, I went to my study room. And I knelt down, Lord, thank you. Amen. You gave me this bicycle. When I was praying, the Lord said, you just consider. Just from last week, Thursday maybe, the money order came, $20. Saturday, a man came, $10. And then the Lord day, another meal designated to you, $2. How much you count? $32. My tears nearly came down. Lord, just $32. I tell you, that was the life we lived. That was the life we lived in a poor, poor chain. And we lived on the Lord really by faith. No arrangement by any source to supply us. The Lord knows. Not like today, some of you brothers here, serving the Lord with full time, the, the churches take care of you. By that time, no, not such a thing. That was the way we lived. I didn't, I spent, now I have been on this earth for three quarters of a century, exactly, 75 years. It's over two quarters of the century of my life. I spent on three things. On the Bible, on spiritual things, and on world situations. If you ask me, what do you know, Brother Lee? I said, I know these three things. I know the Bible. I know the spiritual things. And I know the world. Amen. I'm not boasting. Some of the diplomats should come to me. Then I'll tell them. <laughs> In this room, I mentioned already, maybe over 1,000, not one did know there was such a pact, which was called the Nine Power Pact. You never heard. Probably it was the first time you heard last week, week ago, the Nine Power Pact to protect Chen fully free in territory. No powers is allowed to touch the territory of China. And Japan signed that power pact, that pact. And everybody signed. It was based upon that. USA would never recognize. Japanese invasion to China. And that was the real source of the Pacific War. The bombing of Pearl Harbor. I mentioned to you already. Well, let us come back. We are not in darkness. We are not. Absolutely not in darkness. We are in the light. In the light of the Bible. In the light of the spiritual things and in the light of the world situation. I must tell you, nearly all the leaders on this earth, they don't know the world situation. They really don't know. They know the world situation, but they don't know what is the significance of the world situation. They don't know. But there's a man standing before you who knows. This is why I have a burden. But because this is too much, I tell you, concerning the Lord's recovery. I don't like to see many of you saints who are loving the Lord, seeking after him, now being in the recovery, yet without a clear view. I just like to pass on the clear view to you. So tonight, let us spend a little over one hour time. I hope by 9.10, my speaking will be over. <clears throat> if not, let us wait for another Friday. Okay. What is the Lord's ultimate move? What is the Lord's ultimate move? Ultimate. The Lord is living. And here 
is purposeful. He does have a purpose. And we all know this. He moves. He moves, right? Firstly, we all know he created the universe. That was his first move. Now, what is his ultimate move? And this is why I need some helpers. I ask you four brothers to tell us what is the Lord's, God's ultimate move. His initial move was the creation of the universe. We all know this, right? I couldn't find any hint before the creation of the world what was the Lord's move. You may as well, the Lord was moving there to make a purpose. That's okay. See this. He was moving there to make a purpose, to make an eternal plan. That was just a plan. No move yet. Right? Then his first move, initial move, was to create the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That was his first move, initial move. You brothers, Matthew, and you brother, and you brothers, please tell me what is the Lord's ultimate move on this earth. Please. <coughs> Matthew, you take the deed. <coughs> Uh, God's ultimate move is to work himself uh, Father, Son, and Spirit into a group of people that they, would, that they would take him as their life that he would work his life into them and that they would express and represent him on the earth as a body as a body the church. The church. <laughs> Not bad. Right? Not bad. You know, Matthew, if you go to today's famous preachers, famous pastors, famous ministers, famous Bible teachers, famous theological professors of the top seminaries, you ask them the same question. I doubt they can answer you in such a wonderful and excellent way as Matthew Ferro does. <laughs> I'm so glad, Matthew, not only you. You are now over 20. I got to know you when you were a uh, middle school, high school student, right, in San Francisco. Even tonight, some young ones there, still under 16, probably they can answer the same thing. I'm so glad. So what? So I say the people in the Lord recovery is not in darkness. And you all must realize no need to say those people in you and in the nightclubs, in Las Vegas, casinos, they are in darkness. I must tell you, those leading ones in the Catholic Church, in Christianity, they're also in darkness. They have the Bible in their hand, but no light. You ask them, what is God's ultimate move on this earth? What is? What is? What is? They may say, according to the Bible, prophecy, not too long, he will come back to judge the world. Yes, it is in the Bible, but I tell you, to see this is just doctrinal. Just a kind of doctrinal talk. No light. Is that the Lord's last move on the church? Is that? Let me tell you. You all know, I became physically a little weak. I don't believe 
if not too many, at least some, a few, did pray a lot for me. Just tonight, by the way, I give you my great thanks for your prayer. Now I'm quite happy because I'm quite healthy. Amen. After I prepared all the writings, you know, on First Corinthians, the first ten chapters for the coming training, you know, all the time I need at least two and a half or four months to write all the notes, to check the translation, to work on the references, and to write all the outlines. <coughs> you know, the uh, office people, they know. I've been all the time quite busy. I, I've been on schedule every day. I'm working as an office people. I must work at time with Ron and with Violet and with Felisa and with some others to prepare the things. Okay. I got all the things all ready over one month. Then, I just let you know, even the time is so short. Our house, in our yard, the dirt, actually it's not the dirt, it's a kind of clay. After staying there for and a half years, all the dirt became clay, and the clay is just like the cement. The rainwater stays there. It doesn't, it just doesn't sink down. So all the plants, even the hard day, right? this is your word, the hard day loses. You know, rose is very hardy, couldn't grow. So, we needed to change the dirt to replant all the things. Right? And by the love, and I, I also believe by God's sovereignty, you brothers built a good yard for me to take the walk that help, and still helping my health a lot. So, my point is this to change all the dirt, to replant. All the plants that bothers me very much, no doubt. I was the one who had to work. I work hard because I was so working hardly, and that bothered Sister Lee. <laughs> <laughs> my point is this: Is that my ultimate move? <laughs> is that my ultimate move? That is not my ultimate word. That is chicken feathers <laughs> and garlic skins. That means nothing. That, is, that means I was clearing up the things. Yes, the Lord Jesus will come to jet the earth. But that will not be his ultimate move. That will be what? To clear up the earth. To take away all the feather skins. To clear up, just like what I did in this past one month. In this morning, I spent over an hour, and Scott is here who help us in the garden work. And now, the Furman, you know, I cleared up those two trees at our back gate. I cleared up, I cut up all the branches we don't need I leave the main branches to come up to the wall uh, is that my last ultimate <laughs> 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 no my ultimate move is to come here <laughs> my ultimate move is to come here to give you a kind of message concerning God's ultimate move. <laughs> My trimming of the trees. I, Doug, I trimmed the six trees today. Six. <laughs> and you know, you saw, you saw yesterday, you were there, you saw and how hard work you guys But you saw, you know, two small trees, half dead. Right? right? Half of branches dried up. I trimmed and I trimmed two pine trees 
and changed the other two traits, which I don't know what is their name. <laughs> but I trimmed them. <laughs> is that my ultimate move? This is today's Christianity. The Lord will come back to care of theirs, but that is not. And that will be not his ultimate move. What is his ultimate move? You are right. Have you all heard Matthew's answer? Do you all can say the same thing to me? Okay. George's daughter. Go on. You, you stand up. To repeat it to us, what is the Lord's last ultimate move? work himself into us, Amen. Father, Son, and Spirit, and become our lives, Amen. that we could live him out and express him as his body, the church. Praise the Lord! Isn't this wonderful? Amen. He's greater than the best and top solo Amen. <laughs> but now, okay, now, you tell me, you tell me. <laughs> and I saw your wife there. Help him. <laughs> you tell me, when the Lord began this move? When? When the Lord began this move? Such a move. To work himself into us. Right? As our life. By dispensing himself as the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Right? To live in us, that we may live him, we may express him in a corporate way to become his body, the church. Something like this. Okay, you all have to answer. When was the beginning of this move? Think about it. Of course, I never told you. But it was implied in the messages. <laughs> when this ultimate move of God began? You. Son up, son up. In, in uh, eternity past, God had this desire, had this uh, intention, but I think his move actually began with the incarnation of Jesus. Have you heard? Yeah. This is very good. Amen. When it began, when Mary got the pregnancy. Out of sudden, among millions of the females, there was a young girl, a virgin, by the name of Mary. Out of sudden, the Holy Spirit came upon her. And he, she got pregnant. I must tell you, that was the move. The beginning of the move. Eventually, that beginning of the move is the very beginning of the New Testament in writing. Am I right? What is the beginning of the New Testament in writing? The pregnancy of Mary. Hallelujah. Amen. God got into man. Amen. Am I right? Amen. Then a little child was born Amen. in a manger at Bethlehem. Isaiah 9, 6 tells us that child was whom? Mighty God. You told me. You tell me. God. That child in the manger was the mighty God. Amen. And he was also the son of the Trinity. And this son of the Trinity's name was called the Father. Mysterious. You all know this, right? 
then when he was 30, he came out. Came out. He was very attractive. By what way? I was on there. He was a great magnum. While he was walking along the seashore of Galilee, and he saw the fishers, Peter, John, James, and so forth, he said, come and follow me. They just did it. They give up their boat, net, and their father, and they follow this one, this little carpenter. What was the attracting things? I was not there. I didn't experience. But you must realize something should be there. Amen. Otherwise, how could these fishers let their boat, their net, their profession, and their father and follow this poor little man? Still a young man, 30 years of age. And he stayed with them. And day after day, the more he stayed with him, oh, the more they found out this one is too wonderful, too excellent. Too lovely. Too, too good. Am I right? And after three, nearly half years, out of a sudden, he told them he was going to leave them. He was going to leave them. And he was going to be crucified. They didn't understand. What was to be crucified? They didn't understand. And they told, he told them also, after being crucified, on the third day, he'll be resurrected. They couldn't understand. You see, they have the scripture, but they don't have the light. Yeah, yeah. They had the word out of his living mouth, but they didn't have the light. Amen. Then, to the last night, he told them, he was going. They all got bothered. You know the story, right? Now, the record of the New Testament comes to John 14. Now it's John 14. In John 14, he told them he was going to prepare the way that he could come back to them in short while to bring them all into his father. He couldn't. They couldn't understand. They are surely, they were surely the best representatives of today's Christians. <laughs> Am I right? When you were in Christianity, did you know all these words? No. And then he said, he who loved me, and I will love him, and my father and I, we all will go to him and make a boat, make a boat with, with him. What does this mean? Did, do you believe they, they, they knew? They understood? They didn't! Not a bit! And then in the next chapter he said, I am the vine, you are the branches, I bet in me, and I in you. George, suppose you were there. Could you understand? No. You would say, the vine? What can vine? The California vine? Yeah. What can vine? And he's the vine, I, I'm the branch. How could I be his branch? Huh? I have that in here? How, how, how could I get into you? I bet in you, and you are bad in me. I tell you, this, this, these are words human can never heard. Amen. In human culture, there has never been such language. This is why, you see, Sister Valley, you must learn the new language. The education you got from your university college so far is it, not adequate. There's a new culture here. In the Lord we cover, there is a new culture. Right. Yeah. Right. Am I right? Amen. 
What's the language? Language is to serve the culture. Right? right. right? No the culture, no language. Right? Don't be limited. You know, these days, valid, you forgive me, huh? <laughs> yesterday, maybe day before yesterday, I can't remember so well because I was so busy in my yard work to <laughs> take the tree, to dig that hole, and that was, I was bothering all the time my wife. She was altogether unhappy. <laughs> she said, you have to take care of yourself. Someday, you will be sent to the hospital. <laughs> I didn't argue. <laughs> I didn't say a word. <laughs> but now, so I couldn't remember so well. You, you forgive me, valid. <laughs> the latest tip for you is I was so busy. I was in the yard, and my dirty hands, dirty feet, dirty shoes, everything dirty. Phone call came. <laughs> my wife said, Phone call, telephone. I, I was unhappy. I was very much bothered because I, I, I had no heart for anything else. Even for going to heaven, I have no heart. <laughs> I, like, I like to finish. I like to finish yard work before the great training. Even I try to finish straight night. And tomorrow I will go to a dear wedding. See? Tomorrow, you know, we will have a wedding tomorrow. I intend to go. I like to get everything finished and my hand washed and my whole body becomes clean. Then I go to wedding. <laughs> that was my intention. So I hate any kind of phone call. <laughs> then I, <laughs> I said to my wife, Who's phone call? She said, Valid. I have no choice. <laughs> I went, to, I went to the phone, well, it talks about me, uh, about capitalization with me. I said, you do have a capitalization lease there? That was made, a kind of Ten Commandment made by John Ingalls, right? <laughs> and we all have to keep? Then well, I said, yeah, yeah, you know. That capitalization list mentions clearly whenever some titles of Christ concerning what can kind of person he is. He is the Savior, he is the Redeemer, he is Emmanuel, he is Jesus, he is Christ, he is such kind of person. That title should be capitalized. Whenever uh, he is mentioned as something, as uh, the bread of heaven, as uh, some other things, you don't need to capitalize. Right away, I got offended. I said, you have to forget about all this language limitation, regulation, valid. I said, on this entire earth, everybody among the Christians knows Christ is the craft rock. R-O-C-K. If you use rock for Christ with small letter, everybody will laugh at you. Christ is the craft rock. You must use the big R, right? Capital R. And Christ is the lamb. L-A-M-B. If you use little L, what is that? Then you may say, rock is not a person, lamb is neither a person, so should not, you shouldn't capitalize them. This is too little, Violet. You just forget about John Ingo's regulation. <laughs> <laughs> then I talked to some others, right away I talked to some others, I said, this is too legal, too legal, too legal. I said, too legal. I suppose, then you would say, Brother Lee says, uh, even uh, the neuter gender title of Christ can be and should be capitalized. Okay, I am the living bread. You capital L, you capital B, living bread. People are laugh at you. You must use small letters, living bread. Am I right? And I am the door. If you use door D, Capital D. I'm the door. 
on. People will laugh at you. This is legality. Maybe a little too much. Okay. I say again, Violet, you are the, you are the graduate from the university. Maybe you major in English. I am just a China native. <laughs> well, anyhow, we need to learn the culture, then the language. Nah, not the language, then the culture. It doesn't mean language produces culture. No. Culture produces language. Yeah? 300 years ago, the biggest English dictionary is that, that much. But 200 years later, the biggest dictionary is much bigger. And after 50 years, more new words. But the culture is, is what? It is improving. As the culture is going on, the language has to go on. 50 years ago, do you have the word Xerox? <laughs> I'm a China native, but I studied your language 1919. <laughs> it's 52 years ago. Am I right? Or 62 years ago. You come with me. And now, 1919. And my brother is here. And he knew how my brother sent me to study English. Even I'm a China native, I still knew some of them of the English. I never heard this Xerox. The matter. Then I came to this country in 1958. In the first year, I never saw the word Xerox. It was after two years, Xerox. I said, what, Xerox? <laughs> <laughs> the computer. IBM. Do you have this kind of thing? 50 years ago in your dictionary. No. Culture goes on. So I say to you all, don't be limited by the stupid language. We must follow culture. If we are short of something, make it. <laughs> 1963. John is not here tonight. He went to Philadelphia. <laughs> When we were there, when we were there in Samuel Chang's home, let's go, Samuel Chang's, I, I believe he's here tonight. And one among the leading ones of the four groups, you know, we did have the joint meeting. One of the leading ones was a school teacher teaching high school. He saw he knew English. He might be a master in English. Then when I talked to him, I said, we are going to write a little kind of a explanation to be published in the Los Angeles Times. Because from that time, people were doubting what we were. So I proposed to the brothers, we better put out a little explanation in Los Angeles Times. Then we were there about five or six, including that English teacher. I said, we better say, we practice the church life. That, I, you know, I was always considered a China native. Believe me. Even if you don't have in your mind, subconsciously, you still consider me China native. <laughs> Unconsciously, subconsciously, this is in you. If you deny, I still say this is in you. And now, this may not be in you, but this was in that English teacher. He told me, this is not good English. No people has ever used such a term, practice the church life. I said, right away, I was humble. Right away, I said, this is your mother thing. I don't know English so well. Please, you know what I mean. You select the best word to express this, this idea. The practice of the church lives or to practice the church life. He was, oh, to practice the church life. <laughs> oh, the pra oh, the practice, the practice of the church life. Oh. 
After quite a while, he said, probably this is the best. <laughs> I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> we just use it. I tell you today, the practice of the church life is not only in all publications. Have you noticed? Yes. In other Christian papers, they also use this. Then the time came up, pre-reading. I, I tell you, John is not here. I shouldn't back bet him. You can check with him. When I firstly say, we better use the word as a verb, pre-read. Even, <laughs> you know, John did the best job I translated my own writings of the Chinese hymns, but I didn't fix the meters, the rams in English. John did it. Even tonight, I'm still grateful to him before the Lord. He did a wonderful job. While he did this, then I check. I didn't lack some of his expressions. That changed my meaning. Then I corrected, I changed, you know, the writing to my meaning. He always defeated me with one single expression. This is not good English. <laughs> what can I say? This is my borrowed language. Though I learned this when I was a youth, yet I was not born to this language, and uh, China was conservative. We could only learn to read. We had no freedom to speak. If we speak, by that time, English, everybody will scold us. Scold. To rebuke you. So, we, we, we don't know to speak. This is why. Okay, and now, I said, of course, this is your mother tongue. If you say this is not good language, what can I say? But to some extent, I insist that it has young culture improves. Language has to go on with culture. I was very strong. <laughs> Hardy. <laughs> Sometimes he he give in. He give in. He took my China native English. You know him now. Then pervading came. You know the story? Let me tell you. I still keep one copy of an issue of Billy Graham's paper, The Decision. In that issue, there's an article telling people the best way to study the Bible is to pervade. At least one of U.S. leading Christian paper adopts my China native English term. Pray. So don't be limited by these things. Just forget about it. Now let's come back. Okay. This ultimate move of God began from what? From incarnation. And then it went on and on and on and on till the night he was going to be betrayed, to be judged, and the next day he was going to be crucified. And he told his disciples, no one had the language. This is a new culture. Do you just know this is a new culture? Crucified and will be resurrected after three days? In history, there has never been such a thing. And I will come back. You will not you will not see me, but for a while, 
I will come back. The world now will not see me, but you will see it, see me, because I will be with you, and I will send the spirit of reality, and he will be with you, and he will be in you. What is this? And my father and I, we all will go to him and make a boat with him. What is this? I am divine. You are the branches. Abide in me, and I in you. What is this? This new culture, right? In human history, or already 4,000 years ago, 4,000 years already, never such a thing happened. It's a new culture. So, new language. Don't you know I'm one with my father? Don't you know my father and I are one? What is the language? If you have seen you, me, you see my father. And my father is in me, and I'm in my father. And my speaking is my father working. What is this? Do you understand? You never had this kind of culture. But the language was there. And telling the disciples, this culture is going to happen. And it happened. You know? He went to the cross, and he got resurrected, and on the same day, in the morning, some of them, females, found, discovered something new in the culture. <laughs> the one who was buried, now, he came out of the tomb, and his tomb became empty. And he talked to this female, you know, you know all this story, and then, then a lot of things happened that day. They all got excited. Something happened prehistory. But in the night, they were still not clear. They were afraid. They were scared to death, you know, that night. All of a sudden, no knock on the door, and this Jesus standing there. Just standing. Peace to all. <laughs> they really shocked them. And then, after that, peace to all. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Prehistory. Amen. Then he said, after the preaching, receive ye the holy new man. Amen. He got into them. And he never left them. Yeah. Am I right? He became one with them. When they go facing, he was there. Am I right? And then after 40 days, the Pentecost came. He was not only within them. He poured himself out upon them. They all got word. Talking about the hard work. Again, sometimes I was working, oh, the sprinkler, all oh, sprinkler works. The all oh, sprinkler on me. I said, you just give me the best baptism, right? <laughs> Not by immersion, but by sprinkling. <laughs> all of a sudden, they all got white. From within, they were filled. From without, they got white. And they all became crazy. Amen. They became people prehistory. Amen. You know the story, right? You know the story. Amen. But listen, they were crazy. They had everything in common. Everything in common. Crazy. Well, you got crazy and everything. You don't care. <laughs> you take the yours. When you are not, when you are so sober, right. this is my, <laughs> this is my refrigerator. You have no right to open it. This is my bread. You have no right to eat. <laughs> you are so sober, right? When you got crazy, you see, everything is yours. Take it, use it, and eat, and drink. That was on the day of Pentecost. But that didn't mean they were so spiritual. I tell you, to have the communal life is just a childish matter. 
sorry to say today, so many Christians, they just like to copy that. In China, beside us, beside the law of recovery, there was such a thing, they called themselves Jesus family. Mm. Everyone who joined Jesus family, you have to sell everything and put everything into their account to have everything common. That doesn't mean too much. That is not the Lord's move. Why? You know, not too long. They were arguing. Uh, uh, some got too much food. Some got little food. Some got the best one. Some got the poor one. Some just got chicken feathers. All the others got breast, leg. You know, they were fighting. Then that thing was over. The Holy Spirit didn't care for that. Listen, even the apostle Peter was not clear about God's ultimate move. Yet forgive me to say this, because in his writings, in his messages, you have no hint. Peter never told us Christ lives in us. The only sentence he used that is excellent, he says, we are partakers right. of the divine nature of God. That's all. Beset Jesus in John 15. Abide in me and I in you. And I will live in you. Beset Jesus. Who was the one that told us clearly, strongly, emphatically that Jesus is our life and Jesus lives in us and Jesus is even making his home in us? Who is this person? Oh. You tell me. Paul. So, I don't need to read the reading. Colossians 1, 25 through 27. It is on the board. When you get home, you read. There, Paul says, I received the stewardship to minister what? The completing word of God. The completing even after the four Gospels, even after the Acts, you see, without Paul's epistles, God's divine word is not completed. Paul says he got the commission, the stewardship that means the commission, to complete the word of God. What is completion of the word of God? That is the mystery. What, what mystery? Christ lives in you. This is the mystery. Am I right? Paul tells us this. Then, in Ephesians 3, Paul says, I pray that you may be strengthened in your inner man, that Christ may make his home Amen. in you. Amen. Mm. Eventually, that you all will be filled into the fullness of God. Dear saints, what language is this? This is the language prehistory. In history, there had never been such a culture. Am I right? Then, Paul says, this dear one, who will make home in you, he was raised up from the dead. And he was uplifted to the heavens above all. And he was made the head of all things. And God put everything under his feet. And he was such a head, not only for the church, but to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that fills all, you know. I would ask you, dear saints, what language it is. Has there ever been such a history? No. This is new culture, new language. Even today, 
after more than 1900 years to this Christian, they don't understand all this language. You go to them, Christ make home in you. And Christ is head over things to the church, and the church is the body, and this body is the fullness of him who fills all in all. They will say, what are you talking about? We know what is hell. Yeah. And we know what is heaven and mansion. Yes. And we know what is joy, what is peace. I will assure you. And we know, and we have been taught to make ourselves rich. I tell you, this is four language. This is heaven language. This is eternal language. No such a thing has ever happened in hu human history. Amen. How about with us? Hallelujah. With us, we do have a lexicon. New lexicon. Of our new culture. Amen. The recovery is our new culture. Amen. And they condemn me, witness me, it's a prolific, you know they were prolific, fruitful, speaker and writer. But they say, he teaches something different from Christianity. Praise the Lord. Yeah. They, they, I, I send the Lord. I'm grateful to them. They are faithful to say this. I may not be that prolific, but I do teach things different from Christianity. But I never teach anything different from the Bible. I'm just a repeater. You all know, witness is very repetitious. Again and again and again. Why I'm so repetitious? Because I'm a little concerned that the thing hasn't got into you yet. Amen. I teach things all together from Christianity. But all together not different from the Bible. Amen. The Bible tells us so. Amen. Oh, Amen. dear saints, this is God's ultimate right. move. You see, to have Christ as the mystery of God to enter into you as your life, you see, then you become his living member. And you all become his body. The very fullness of the one who feels all oh, you know. We don't understand this inadequate. But it is here. I must tell you. Amen. You see, this is Paul's what? This is Paul's completing ministry. Telling us Christ is God's mystery, and Christ has become our life. And then we are the church, and the church is Christ's mystery. And Paul tells us also the church is the body. Who else in the, new, in the, in the, in the entire Bible tells us that the church is the body? No one else. Not one. Not one more. Only Paul. But, listen, Paul was gone, but John was still living. Right after Paul was gone, even Paul was not gone yet. I tell you, his completing ministry was damaged, was broken. Different teachings came in, and some different teachings became prevailing. In the Timothy training, we saw this. So there was the decline, the degradation. He wrote the book to tell them, you must keep the mystery of the faith. And what is the mystery? That is, great is the mystery of Godness. That is, God manifested in the flesh. I still like that banner song. 
the banner, the banner song. The church is the house of the living God. The church is the pillar and the base of the truth. And great is the mystery of Godness that God was manifested in the flesh. I like it. This was his slogan, declaration, to bring the degraded Christian back to his competing ministry. But anyhow, it was damaged. Then God raised up the oldest apostle, John, and gave him, you know, the mending ministry. Now, you have God from the Living Stream Office three series of messages. Christ, heavenly ministry, Paul's completing ministry, and John's mending ministry. John came in. John's gospel, John's epistle, John's Revelation, all were written around AD 90. The latest books to mend the broken net, to mend the broken completing ministry. And what was the way for him to mend? He said the same thing. <coughs> in John chapter 14, in John chapter 15, I mentioned already how the Lord Jesus told us that he would make his home in us. Make a boat, the Father and he would make a boat with us and we will be in him and he will be in us. Am I right? And we'll be just one. And he also told us that we have to eat him. I am the bread. He that eats me, even he shall live by me. We know this. Then listen. Listen. In John's epistle, First John, chapter 3, chapter 4, John repeatedly told, tells us that how God dwells in us because of the spirit he gives us. Then in the revelation, the Lord Jesus himself promised he that overcomes, I will give him to eat the tree of life. Right? Then he promised, I will give them to eat the hidden manna. And then he promised, he, I'm knocking the door, now I'm outside of Christianity. Christianity is Christ-like. I'm outside. Outside the door. I'm knocking the door. Who shall open the door, I will enter in to feast with you. Amen. Not only in the tree of life, the, the man, he the man, but to feast with him. And he also promised he that overcomes will be the pillar, right? In my God's temple. We know that is for building. <coughs> now you can see the eating of Jesus is for the building. Then eventually, at the end of Revelation, that means at the end of the New Testament, and then the entire Bible, what will be there? A builded New Jerusalem with the flowing river of life and the tree of life growing along the two sides of the river. That is a clear picture of the coming ultimate consummation of God's purpose. Isn't this clear? Right? This is God's ultimate move, dear saint. You all have to see this. But listen. Dick Taylor, sorry, he's, he's not here tonight. He is in the... Where? Tulare. Holding a conference there. Just last week he told us. A brother told him just recently in Anaheim. In Anaheim, there was a great Christian entity rally with all the leading Christians, leaders, great leaders. I don't need to give the name there. And uh, one of them, the leaders, put out a banner. You know what the banner says? We follow Christ, but not Paul. Oh. 
That means what? That means they follow the four gospels, not the epistles written by Paul. They didn't say this, and I was never told in front, of, but my understanding, this banner implies that they are opposing us. Because through these last few years, my messages always go out mainly from the epistles of Paul. Amen. And especially this last one or two years, I stress so strongly Paul's word is the completing ministry. Amen. So they put out if this was not the reason I use the word so, I asked them to forgive me. But this is my understanding. Right. They put out a banner that says, we follow Christ, but not Paul. Mm. What does this mean? This simply means we praise Christ as the Son of God. And he became a man. And he lived on this earth. And he died on the cross. And he shed his blood for our sins. And he was buried. And he was resurrected. And today he's on the throne. He's our Redeemer. He's our Savior. And he will come back. And now we believe him for the forgiveness of sins. And that we may be regenerated to become children of God. One day we will go to heaven. Now on this earth we have to improve our behavior to glorify God. This is the so-called fundamental teaching with a fundamental superficial gospel. That's all. And the best today's Christianity is doing is just to have a heart, loving God, loving sinners, going out to win the souls. This is all. That's all. And this is what they mean. We follow Christ, but not Paul. But they forgot. Four of the Gospels were written after Paul's writing. That is John. And John's writing is to mend Paul's complete ministry that was broken. How could they say they follow Jesus? In John's writing, John 14, John 15, in those two chapters, every word was by Jesus. If they say they follow Christ, they should follow these two chapters too. And how about in Revelation chapters 2 and 3, the Lord Jesus said, He who overcomes, I will give him to eat the tree of life. That is Christ's word. They have to follow this. But they don't mean this. In their Bible, they don't have revelation. In their theology, they don't have the seven spirit. And they don't have Christ resurrected and becoming the life-giving spirit indwelling us. They don't have this. This is why I have a burden to put out to expose the defects of the Nicene Creed. Right. These two main points, two main, two crucial, are all in the New Testament. In Paul's epistle, you have Christ resurrected, right? To become the life giving spirit, indwelling us. You have this. In the Minion ministry, John's ministry, you have the seven spirit for the seven golden lampstands. Am I right? Their traditional, fundamental, they think scriptural creed made under Alexander. No, no, no. Constantine the Great, the Nicene Creed. Never cover these two things. <coughs> This is what they are doing. Paul, in his complete ministry, told us how Christ lives in us, that we all may become his body. John, in his ministry, told us how Christ lives in us <clears throat> to be our food, to have life, manna, in the face, that we may become the lampstand. Yeah. On 
only Paul tells us the church is the body of Christ, and only John tells us that the church is the lampstand. Amen. And both to be the body and to be the lampstand depends upon the eating of Jesus. Amen. Yeah, today, such a nationwide Christianity rally with all the biggest leaders there, they put out a banner, they follow Christ, but not Paul. Yeah, they claim the fundamental. And they claim the scriptural. Are they scriptural? No. Surely not. They were just like the uh, primitive missionaries who went to China. They only had the four gospels. By that time, they translated only the four gospels. They told us, Jesus loves me. This I know, because the Bible tells me so. Right. Very good. They never put out him, Christ, make his home in my home. This I know, because the Bible tells me so. <laughs> they never put out such a song. Jesus, after resurrection, becomes the life-giving spirit. To live in me, to be my life, that I may be his members, and all of us may be his church, the fullness of him that fills all in all. This I know because the Bible tells me so. They never put out such hymns. They put out the superficial. Jesus loved me. This I know because the Bible tells me so. Even the naughty boys on the on the street, they 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 learn. They, they learned this to mock us. They knew me. I was born into Christianity when they saw me. This is not me. This I know because the Bible tells me so. <laughs> <laughs> now, I would say, I should expect that some hymns will go out. Jesus now is the life-giving spirit. Even the seven spirit in me, to make me his living members, how I know this, because the Bible tells me so. Amen. There's not, has never been such a song. And one thing more, listen, one thing more, that is a very famous, popular Bible teacher on the broadcast. <clears throat> and Anak their typesetting work did the typesetting for this man's book. In that book, it says, this popular Bible teacher was asked, what is the tree of life? What is the tree of life? You know what was the answer? I check with our authors, he has the writing in his office. But the general idea is this. The answer was that since this tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil are not here today. So, forget about that. <laughs> Something like that, right? This is the idea. The, his, the popular Bible teacher says, these two trees are not here now. Don't talk about that. They don't realize these two trees are here. There's more than here. They are here. More than they were in the garden. When they were in the garden, they were outside of Adam. But today they are here. We say, no. You tell me the tell not of good or evil is not in you? Huh? If this is not in you, who is that one? Paul says, not I. But sin does it. Who is this sin? If the tree of life is not in you, how could you have the lie, the, the law of the spirit of life? You see, you see the blindness, the ignorance, the superficiality of today's Christian teachings. I'm not fighting against them. My heart, I told the elder, my heart was really broken. 
And just yesterday and today, the brother told me, and they just came out. Just came out. Came out by a kind of training or convention of today's one of the prevailing gospel preaching organization. And the leader there in his training teaching says, God as capitalist. God as, that means God is a capitalist. A seminar, the, his seminar to promote religion and riches. It teaches the Christians how to be rich and how to pay less tax. It is here. I don't believe, let me check, whosoever here has seen, has read this paper, raise up the hand. You see? The number of hands. They all read this paper. This happened just last weekend. This is one of the most prevailing gospel preaching organizations. I don't need to tell you the name. Here in Anaheim. Here in Los Angeles. No, no, no. In, in Southern California. The headquarters is there. This, dear saints, is today's Christianity. Who is not among Christianity? Praising the gospel just merely by the word and prayer without any gimmicks. All oh, use gimmicks. Well, I don't know how to do. My time? Keep going? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, you tell me. It's easy. What is our recovery? You tell me. What is our recovery? What is our ultimate recovery? The recovery began the latest since Martin Luther, right? That was the initial recovery. Now, what is the ultimate recovery? To recover the communal life? No. To recover the washing of feet? Of course, in the Bible, there's no leng lengthening of legs. <laughs> the feeling of teeth, forget about those. <laughs> but in the Bible, you do have the foot washing. Is foot washing the Lord's ultimate recovery? No. You have to forget about all these. The Lord's ultimate recovery is exactly the Lord's ultimate move. <coughs> that is what? That is to recover Christ being the midst of God becomes the indwelling spirit to infuse, to impart the triune God into the tripartite man, to make all of us who believe in him the living members, to be a body as his expression. And this body is local, expressed. And this is the lampstand which becomes his real testimony, the testimony of Jesus. I tell you, dear saints, this is the Lord's recovery. Amen. Just because some of you didn't see this clearly a few years ago, you were cheated. You were cheated to say the meeting is too dead, uh, the meeting, uh, 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 this and that. You all know this. And uh, they have a way to have the better meeting. And their way to have the better meeting is to have the prayer with a uh, hot calendar, uh, dead pie store. Uh, and they put out, in their prayer meeting, they put out such a pie, and they eat, and they pray. That their, their way to have the meeting. Then on the Lord's Day, they said, don't need to meet in the home. Go to the beach. You know this. And some even went to play the box, box ball. You got cheated. You cannot deny even tonight, here among you, a number of cheated. But thank the Lord's mercy. Amen. 
You have been rescued from that. Yeah. Why you would listen to that kind of cheating word? Just you don't see. What is the recovery? The Lord is not to recover the way how to meet. The ultimate recovery is not that. How to meet is the chicken feathers. Am I right? Regardless how to meet. Sitting on the floor, this is okay. The function, the function is not to shout. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> that is living. What can living? You are not so living as a ball game. This is systems, systems, the ball game, they were more excited. The riches of the meeting must be Christ experience in your daily life. Amen. You bring the experiences of the surplus of Christ to the meeting. Amen. The ultimate recovery of the Lord is just the last ultimate move of God. The ultimate move of God has been lost. Now the Lord's going to recover it. Saints, you know the story. 200 years ago, the Puritans, they recovered baptism by immersion. They recovered holy nights. They recovered presbytery and so on. They recovered a lot of things. But I would say, all oh, small points. The Nindorf saw something greater. The Nindorf saw something greater. Darwin, Nelson, John Nelson, Darwin, they saw something very great. But they became too doctrinal. And they were killed by their being too doctrinal. And now the Lord is going to merely, purely, singly, solely, holy to recover this one thing. Christ at the mystery of God to live in us as the indwelling spirit, making us his members, that we may become the church, the midst of Christ, as the body to express him. This is the Lamb stand. This is the Lord's ultimate recovery. Amen. And after this, you'll be assured there'll be no recovery. Because God only intended to do this much. And while Paul was on this earth, God only did this much. No more than this. Now how could God recover more? Now, God is right here recovering this lost item. Christ in you. The hope of glory. To make all of us his living body. Dear saint, if you have seen this, you will never be cheated away. You will be never led astray. You will never be made what? Distracted. People told you the meeting's dead. You say, praise the Lord. That's the meeting. <laughs> you will never be affected because you see the Lord recovery. Is this? This is the last recovery. The ultimate recovery of the Lord. I think concerning this, I don't need to say too much. You all know this. Dear saints who are in the recovery, you all have to see this. I must tell you, this has been and still the reason that I have been kept in the recovery over half a century. Amen. It doesn't mean all the time the churches were wonderful and I was so good with all the co-workers. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that. But it means from the first day I entered into the recovery. I saw the ultimate recovery of the Lord. And this is why I've been with you over 20 years and never changed my tone. Right. I give you thousands of messages, but all on this one thing. And I will still give you more. I hope the Lord will give me another 25 years. Amen. Then I could finish the study of the entire Bible, Amen. then you will see all the life studies will be just on this one point. Amen. Amen.
The two great mysteries, the mystery of God, Christ, and the mystery of Christ, the church. We all need to see these dear saints. Forget about the good meetings, living meetings, rich meetings, uplifted meetings, or down meetings, low meetings, poor meetings, dead meetings. Forget about that. The Lord recovery is this, the ultimate recovery. Okay, the anyhow, we come to last. This needs a little longer time. What should I do? Keep going. Keep going. Oh, keep on. Okay, say it on. <laughs> okay. You all have heard. You all have heard. Listen, just be quiet. You all have heard. The earth was created by God. It was really glow, right? Really glow with five main continents, right? Europe, Asia, Africa, Australasia, and America. You must be deeply impressed that the continent of America had been reserved for 55 centuries not fully exposed to mankind. Until 500 years ago, it was still a new land, a virgin land. Don't you believe here in this one point there should be a strong significance of God's purpose? Amen. Why God kept this continent away from mankind for 55 centuries? My answer is this. Historian never said this. My answer is this. God ran this way to reserve this continent for his ultimate recovery. I showed you already how God spent that much time, that much arrangement to prepare a Roman Empire, which was very good form or to complete God's gospel and which was even the more very good for the spread of the gospel right then God prepared Germany to uh, protect to support the recovery the reformation then one and a half centuries ago God prepared Britain an island small nation to become the worldwide power. You know this, right? For what? For putting down the Catholic influence that was carried out by Spain. <coughs> Spain got the Western world, got most of America, Latin America, the so called. Right where God came in, using Britain to defeat Amada. Then Britain exercised her influence, that is, not Catholic influence, but the Protestant influence over those other continents, Asia, Africa, and so forth. Then Britain was used by God to spread the gospel and to spread the truth. And here I must add a word. I, I did say to you, I'm proud that I was born in China. I was proud that I was typically Chinese. You know what? Of what I was proud of this. In the last nearly two centuries, God sent the best, the right. top spiritual missionaries to China. Right. Yeah. Right. No other country had ever received this kind of spiritual persons like China did. Right. Right. Taylor was one. Very spiritual. You know, his experience of John 15 is the top. And then Mr. Woodbury, the one of A.B. Simpson's Christian Alliance Church. The Christian Alliance Church was formed about 1915. But little, just around 1920, Mr. Woodbury went to Shanghai to set up a Christian Alliance Church. And all the spiritual seeking ones do realize the most spiritual mission that went to China was 
A.B. Simpson's Christian Alliance Church. Uh, Mr. Woodbury, is Brother Samuel Chang here? Mm -hmm. yeah. Would you please turn up, Samuel? Yeah, he can tell you. His father was a medical student who got the greatest help from Mr. Woodbury. And all the missionaries didn't produce any special person. Mr. Woodbury put, produced a medical student, Dr. Lee. And he was the first, the number one spiritual China native. He was really spiritual. He know the cross. He know resurrection. I have a little biography of him. <coughs> then other ones. And eventually, Miss Amy Barber. Who helped Brother Ni. It was through her that we got to know all the spiritual books. How could we live in that far away behind backward country and they got to know all the spiritual books? Some of you now we got to know through these top spiritual persons. You must believe me. I tell you. 1927, Brother Lee began to write the special man. Yet to realize, special man actually mainly is not Brother Lee's writing. It's altogether his translation. In the first edition of that book, Brother Lee gives the names of the writers and the sections of the writings from which he translated all these things. Hmm. 1927. How many years? 34 years ago, Watchman Nee was translating these spiritual books into Chinese. And I got ready. Even two years ago, before that, I got to read Brother Nee's translations. We got contact all the spiritual books. I'm not boasting. We've never been to the Western world, including Brother Nee. But we read through Thank the Lord's sovereignty that Brother Nina and I were all put into the English college. We can read English books. So we read through all these history of the church, biographies, autobiographies of all the spiritual gens and the central messages of all the big writers. We read through. We got to know that you have to realize was like Paul when he was saw before he was called to be the completing minister. He was taught with the Old Testament and the home. Gamaliel. Gamaliel. He was taught. I'm so grateful. I was taught by the great brothers and teachers with the Old Testament, with all the prophecies, even all these messages I give you on the tabernacle, on the ark, a lot, you know, uh, based upon their teachings. But they taught in a doctrinal way, as I told you already. Yet, they were right. You see, after these years, I got some experiences. I don't like to teach the type just in doctrinal way. I like to apply those doctrines to experiences. So, how much we owe them, we are on their shoulders. We taught this kind of good, top spiritual missionaries sent to China. How could we be Christians? This is why I illustrated just like the blood, right? Blood current within body, it flows. Two centuries ago, the blood of Christ's body flew to China. And there it produced new cells. Then it come up, come, it comes back to the Western world. But sorry to say, due to the pride of so many Christians, they won't take it. But thank the Lord, many of you did take it. Now you can see the world situation. It was read of the Lord that the Lord raised up Great Britain, even though I don't agree with her politics. But he was used by the Lord for about two centuries. 
Okay, now listen to this. Okay, up to 500 years ago, the Lord exposed this new continent yeah. to the main part of mankind. That means to Europe, right? To the white people who were most civilized, most cultured, number one. And number two, because just by that time, you know, by that time, a lot of thoughtful persons love the Lord. They like to have the free thinking about the Bible. They like to have the free thinking about spiritual things. But there, they have the Catholic Church, they have the state church, you know, persecuting them. Even, you know, in England, some new thoughtful person who loved the Bible so much were, were burned by the Church of England. You know this, right, on the stakes. So these dear ones, they aspired to come to this new country. And they did. And after they came, gradually, 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 by God's sovereignty, a new country was founded. Amen. That was two and a half centuries ago, right? It's about, you just forget about the years, you must take care of the points. A country was founded absolutely different from any kind of country on this earth. It is not only democratic, it is constitutional. Giving people the free speech, especially concerning religion. This is why we are so free here. Thank the Lord. Amen. Am I right? Amen. And that laid a good foundation. And the Americans are frank. The Americans are open to all good things. As long as you have something better. Even, sorry to say, most of you are Americans. Some kind of American pride. No doubt about it. Yet, the Americans mostly are very open to better things. They don't care whether you are Chinese, you are an Indian, you are white or black, or white or so. as long as you have something better, they'll take it. Not Britain. Even today, Britain, no. It must be something British. Must be something Cambridge. Must be something Oxford. You know what I mean. Even with friends, even the more. The friend people are very conservative, proud to the third heaven, <laughs> not accepting anything for it. America is different. America is a melting pot. Not only melting different peoples, but melting different cultures. The top things of cultures. Anything that's good, America takes it. Hallelujah. If I am today now in France, I'm through. Mm. If I am today in England, I'm through. Even here, I'm opposed, yes, still, quite close to 10,000 people accepted the Lord's recovery because you don't care for my speaking of English. I got to know many Chinese in this country are professors. I tell you, their English is more broken than mine. They know how to teach mathematics, but their grammar is wrong, their cows is wrong, their phrase is wrong, they just spoke, speak the wrong English, but they teach the top mathematics. I told you already, it's hard to have a mathematical department of any university without the Chinese professors there today. It's over 10,000 Chinese professors in this country just this summer in Southern California, all the high student graduates, hundreds, hundreds of thousands, selected 10 top students. You know what? Seven are Chinese. And praise the Lord, three are in the church. Here. And all the three are Chinese? Believe it or not, this is the fact. But I don't think this pig valid your kind of best English. <laughs> and my grandson, I believe, Benjamin is here. I told you already, UC Irvine has f seven schools. Everyone selected last summer a top student, seven top students. And he was one among the seven. Eventually, he was selected the top one of the seven. 
And I still have the chancellor who was elated his award word in the award meeting, saying among 20,000 students about, within two or three years, they could only produce such a young scientist. That was my grandson, Benjamin. And he finished double major within three years. <laughs> and he has now been accepted by so many medical schools, including Stanford. UCLA medical school received, accepted him, Stanford accepted him. And he, he, he got into a dilemma. <laughs> he, he's now talking over the phone with me, da, Grandpa, which school should I go, Stanford or UCLA? I don't think he speaks the top English as whether well, Vela does. <laughs> <laughs> Americans are for the fact. This is a good point. Who did this, they're saying? Spontaneous? Spontaneously? I don't believe. This is all God's doing. God preserved this continent. God founded this country. And this is the number one extraordinary country. Full of freedom. Not one country like this. Is it considered? Which country? Like this. Then, listen. Through two wars. First European war. World War. Second. So these two wars, God put down Britain. God raised up USA. You know this story. The first war without USA interfering, I don't think Britain and France could get the victory. So after the victory, they were trying to form the League of Nations, but too much British. British way, British tactics to restrict the Germans. As I told you, U.S. did not agree with. So U.S. withdrew. U.S. was not a member of the League of Nations. And the League of Nations was formed in Geneva under Britain and France. Then the second war, you know the story, U.S. entered. U.S. took the great power to defeat Germany in Europe and to defeat Japan on the Pacific. And then... Russell proposed to give all different small peoples collectively freedom, cancel all colonies, and Britain had no way but to agree with. So the United Nations was formed in San Francisco. And it was built with a building in New York. It was a thing in the U.S. hand. Mm -hmm. I was in the international trade for seven and a half years, taking care of the account. I know the exchange. That was in 1929, 28, 27, 26, something like this, until I left for the lot work. Every day, our company receives the cable telling the exchange rate, no US dollar. Always pound sterling, francs. But after the Second War, U.S. dollars become the international, worldwide money. U.S. is taking the lead. But listen, all the world, you see, after these two wars, became under the influence of the U.S. Only one country. You know who is this. And that is Gog and Mikkel. This fulfills the Bible. God made them, resisting God. And that was the only nation who praised what? Atheism. God can make them against God. God blockaded that. USA, most under Roosevelt. Roosevelt was a great statement of the US, which had ever been produced. But he made mistakes. Firstly, recognized the blockade. Russia in 1931-33. Then secondly, during the war, the second war, he supplied Russia to defeat Germany. Actually, Russia didn't spend that much to defeat Germany. 
Russia was saving SAV, and she's saving. Let USA to spend every energy and everything to defeat Germany. After Germany was defeated, Russia became rich and strong. Who made her strong? The mystic of USA. Right away after the war, Russia became the problem to USA. Yes, it was wrong. Yes, it should leave Russia there. The German exhausted her. Right. And then she would exhaust Germany. After the boats were exhausted, Russia would come to pick up the spoil. Yes. Yeah, I mean, yes. Come to pick the oil. The, the, not the oil, the spoil. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> the, there'd be no problem. But listen, after the Second War, Marshall plan has to be exercised to rescue the Western European countries, but not Russia. Because Russia became rich by the help, by the wrong supply given by Roosevelt. And Russia made the third mistake to sign the Yalta secret conference between China. And that's right, you, you know, Russia. But God is sovereign. Right. The time is over. I have three pieces of papers here. Just happened after last Friday. Red Chan in their crucial council made the decision to take the policy to join America, Europe, and Japan. Red Chan is a communist country. I said, oh, he should side with Russia to fight against the free world. But now the policy was decided to join. They would join the free world, leaving Russia so lonesome. <laughs> what is this? This is again the blockade. You can, I just read to you. Peking leader reported upheld on ties to West. They made. Then here's another. Chan ties to West reportedly to continue. These are the news. Then it says what? Tongues, you know, today, powerful one in Red China. Tongues policy toward Moscow was uh, prevailing. That means uh, he, he, he is against Moscow. And then the Chinese newspaper says what? The Red Chinese government sent the premier, the top man, to negotiate with India, Pakistan, to isolate them from Russia. <laughs> Russia never got on any ocean. So until about 20 years ago, he got India, he got a base, naval base, he got Ceylon, an Air Force base, and so forth. So her navy came into the Indian Ocean, passing through the Malaya Strait. You know the Malaya Strait? Just between Malaysia, the tip, the fingertip of Malaysia, and Indonesia. Very narrow. Even 100, in the 110, I think, 10,000 10, or 100,000 10 tank cannot pass through that strait. So narrow. Now, the Russian fleet can pass that strait, get into what? Pacific. And now, Russia, through Vietnam, got Kinan Bay. Kinan Bay is a naval bay built by the Americans during the Vietnam War. And that Kinan Bay is bigger than the, uh, than the bay in Manila, in the Philippines. Subay, Subay Bay. Subay Bay is the American the Navy base, the greatest it was. But now Killen Bay is bigger than that. And now this Killen Bay fell into Russia's hand. So Russia's fleet is free on the Pacific. And this is why the Santa fleet of America should be there. In the Pacific. Now, Red Chan joined the free world. This is against the human mentality. Right? to isolate Russia and send their top men to negotiate with India, Pakistan, to what? To cut off 
Russia, to blockade Russia. I tell you their things, this is the world ultimate situation. The time's nearly over. I must close, sorry. Let me say with you, do you believe, do you believe, if you really know the history of the world, do you believe the history of the tendency of mankind shows that after USA, as a power worldwide, God will raise up another power? No. no. You say, no. no. If you say yes, I will say, which, which country? Yeah. Which country? Which country can be raised up as another world power? In Europe? No possibility. In Asia? No possibility. In Africa? No possibility. In Australia? That was a joke. <laughs> so you see, you see, the world situation, dear saints, this is the last time. After this situation, no more. This is the world ultimate situation. For what purpose? For the purpose that the Lord may carry out his ultimate recovery. Israel it has been reformed. Jerusalem has returned. Israel is fully ready. Only the church cannot come up. And I told you already, I've been here in this country watching over, over 20 years. I never got to know a spiritual book has ever come out. I never heard a spiritual person ever produced in America and in Europe. But all this kind of thing came out. Right. What does this mean? These are, these are parts of pieces. Right? Dig some parts of pieces. You have to put them together. You have to see the picture. What this means, you put all this thing together, you have to realize the recovery is the Lord's move today. Amen. And the Lord is used the last word situation, that is America, to spread his recovery. No other country is so central, so convenient, so prevailing for, pre for pre spreading anything. Like USA. Yes, it's just here. Go for us to be here and go for us to send out the Lord's recovery. The only thing that is needed, that is our faithfulness. We all have to be faithful. We all have to seek after Him. We all have to treasure the time. We all have to treasure the vision. We all have to treasure the recovery. We all have to treasure our responsibility. Just forget about everything. Rise up and stand for the Lord's recovery. Yeah. This is the ultimate time yeah. for him to accomplish his purpose, yeah. to bring him back. You look at this. I hope this is clear to you all. Well, I think we just have a little prayer. How about, because this is close to 10. Do you want to still stay here? Yeah. Yeah. Or, or just one or two testimonies? Okay. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on social media or visit our website for more from Living Stream Ministries.